Hello and welcome to the show. As I said in uh, yesterday's video, here is the second part to the go-kart track challenge. And now it is the turn of the, the rather fast and rather mental race cars. Now, in case you didn't watch yesterday's video, or perhaps you are new to this channel, if that is so, hello and welcome. And uh, yeah, you'll like it here. There's lots of cars. Occasionally I crash things. We're being rather sensible for us uh, today. Yeah, this is, this is sensible uh, when it comes to fail race stuff. Anyway, the challenge is not to spin a go-kart. That's no, you didn't see that. That's not important. I don't know how I managed that one, actually. Uh, I, may, I, look, I don't know how I did that. I'm still confused by that one. Uh, anyway, yes, today, challenge since Gran Turismo lets you have lets you race with go-karts it gives you go-karts to drive and it has this track which is I think it's pretty much a go-kart track it looks a little bit too small a little bit too narrow to be one of those stadium special stages you get in rallies we're going to see how full-size race cars they have their lap times compared to that of the fastest go-kart in the game this is the 125 shifter kart and so yeah we were expecting the go-kart to be pretty damn fast <laughs> around here because this is where it's designed for but it's going to be interesting to see how the race cars lap times actually compare uh, to this thing it is a mighty fast go-kart as well this pretty good fun to drive up first for the race cars we have the vw lupo cup car this is one of my favourite race cars, actually. This is probably a bit odd for, for, you, for you to hear me say that, but no, this car is excellent. It is huge fun to drive because it has an awful lot of grip, not too much power, not too much weight. You can throw it around and, yeah, it's just a really nice car to drive. Statistic-wise, 123 horsepower weighs 840 kilos, uh, roughly the same power-to-weight ratio of a Lotus Elise, uh, and yeah, it's got an awful lot of grip. When I did the road cars one, I didn't pay sort of much consideration to tyres, I just used whatever came with the cars, which is the same as what's, hap what's happening with these. However, I believe all of these cars are running on race tyres, so yeah, they're going to have quite a lot of grip, and this thing does have huge amounts of grip. Very, very easy to drive this thing, and uh, because it hasn't got huge hasn't got very much power and um, yeah it was I think for this final section of the lap I didn't even have to break I could just let off and turn I had so much grip that uh, yeah you could get around there no this isn't going to be the fastest car in the world it's not got a huge amount of acceleration neither has it got a huge amount of top speed but it can carry an awful lot of that speed through the corners is is a lovely car to drive this one I highly highly recommend it and if I was to do a race series on Gran Turismo I'm pretty sure that this would be the car that I would use because a grid full of these would be amazing fun the other car that I would be tempted to use if I did make a race series is one of these. This is a Mazda MX-5. Now the game calls it a touring car. I'm not entirely sure it is a tour touring car. Uh, it certainly wouldn't get into the BTCC, I don't think. Um, yeah, this is a, an interesting car. I'm not sure if this is actually a real vehicle. Uh, when you look on the information, it says it's a Grand, or a, yeah, I think it's a Grand Turismo modified car, or something like that. So it's a, a, a sort of a modified race version of an MX-5. It looks like it would race somewhere. It looks like there's a race series for these sort of cars. If there is, I really want to take part in it because it's an amazing thing. This is another car that is really very, very nice to drive. A little bit more powerful than the Lupo, 205 horsepower, weighs less than the Lupo at 795 kilos. And uh, yeah, it's a quick car, this one. Again, not going to have the top speed um, because, yeah, it's, it's not what it's built for. Better acceleration. Again, not going to be quite as fast as some of the race cars you'll see a bit later because it just doesn't have the power. However, it has unbelievable amounts of grip. Uh, this thing's rear wheel drive and I can be absolutely flat out of every corner and it will not oversteer, it will not step out of line. Uh, maybe if you used a handbrake you could get it to, but on the most part this thing's incredibly grippy. Uh, and therefore huge amounts of fun to drive around a go-kart track. Uh, another car that I really recommend you have a go with. Up next it is a Lexus touring car, again much like with the MX-5, this is another Gran Turismo modified one. I believe, but it, it's not a particularly far-fetched thought to have a Lexus ISF as a touring car. This is an interesting car. Uh, I was quite surprised by how much power this thing has. I suspected it to have the normal sort of touring car amount of power, so sort of 350, 400 horsepower, but no, this has 600 plus horsepower. I can't quite remember the exact number. That's a lot of horsepower uh, in, in this sort of a car. However, amazingly, despite all of that power, this is a really nice car to drive. Again, it has huge amounts of grip. It doesn't have any low speed understeer. Um, yeah, it's it's got stupid levels of grip. You will have, you will probably be wondering why I'm saying that, considering you just watched me sort of sliding it around the last corner. That was me being silly with this car. 
Uh, me being silly with this car can barely get it to slide. Uh, so I, I think this was me just finishing the laps with this car. And then I was going to see what I could actually, sort of, if I could get it to slide anywhere. No, I'm not very good at drifting. I've said that many times. I don't particularly like it. But I wonder just how much grip this car has. And this is me being an idiot with the throttle. Just trying to get this car to step out of line and do something. And it does not let go of the road. There is smoke pouring off the front tyres. That is how much grip this car has. Yeah, you can kind of get it a little bit slide, but it really, really doesn't like it. Um, that's the sign of a very grippy car. This thing's incredible around a proper racetrack. And fairly good fun around a go-kart track. Up next, we have a rally car. I thought it'd be a, bit, a little bit different uh, with this one. Not just go for a Subaru or an Evo. So I went for uh, an Escort. Uh, 98 Escort. Also, I was rather low on money and couldn't afford much, so this was a fairly cheap, fairly cheap for a rally car. Anyway, uh, it's got 300 horsepower, weighs 1,230 kilos, so not quite got the power to weight ratio of some of the other cars uh, that we have here. It also has an awful lot of understeer. Uh, if you watched yesterday's video, you've seen a couple of the four-wheel drive cars, uh, the Tommy Kyra ZZ2 and the Lamborghini Gallardo. Um, they struggled a little bit through the fast, sort of the fast final corner this struggles quite a lot more which surprised me considering this has less power um, probably around the same sort of weightish uh, yeah I'm not sure why this car understeers so much it's just this final corner it really really struggles with now the advantage of having a four-wheel drive car is you can put the power down out of the slow speed corners without worrying about it floundering all over the road which some of the uh, the bigger faster cars do however that understeer was causing this car problems through the low speed corners it's not too bad really uh, it's just that final corner and that final corner is a pretty damn important one uh, for this lap because it sets you up for the start of the next lap if you get a good run out of here you get a good top speed down the straight and when you're talking about under 30 second laps yeah every little counts I may be pushing it a little bit too hard uh, and bumped the wall up uh, next we have a Subaru BRZ I believe this is one of the JGTC that's a very hard acronym to say and I think I've got it right uh, championship cars or oh, it's one of the Japanese GT sort of racing things I've never liked this sort of car. In racing games, in all previous Forces and Gran Turismo I've driven these in, never really been a massive fan of them, don't really suit my driving style. Uh, and while admittedly I am on a, a rather different track to the normal places you would race these, this car wasn't bad. Uh, this really wasn't too bad to drive. It's got a lot of, as you can see, it's got a lot of aero, um, aero parts and I presume when it races properly it relies quite a lot on aerodynamics and around a track like this it's really not going to use any of them maybe the final corner uh, they might kick in a little bit but you know, most of this most of this lap is done at sort of 30 40 miles an hour and aero is not really designed to work at those sort of speeds so yeah this car can struggle a little bit can struggle to put the power down uh, a little bit as you saw it will slide around that's not really surprising though again because the, at such low speeds uh, cars like this aren't designed really to deal with that um, it's not surprising that it slides around uh, yeah overall though this wasn't too bad of a car to drive it does have terrible visibility though uh, when, when you're racing it in cockpit view I was surprised by just how bad uh, or how little of the track you could see it's all well it's probably as bad uh, as the likes of the Le Mans cars I wasn't expecting that but now overall not too bad of a car to drive that one up next we have the first of the really big powerful race cars this is a Mercedes AMG, uh, SLS AMG GT3, I think that's the correct way round of all the words in the name of this blooming car. Uh, we messed about with one of these on Forza, I think when we went drifting with race cars, rather unserious, is unserious? Uh, whatever, uh, a word. Yeah, when we messed about with drifting some race cars, I'm pretty sure we used one of these and it was quite good. Uh, it was a bit of, it was a bit difficult to drive as a race car on Forza, if it was untuned anyway. Uh, on here though, it is a completely different story. It was actually very nice considering where we are I mean yeah there was an awful lot of throttle control uh, involved with keeping this car pointing in the right direction I think you were flat out with this for maybe half a second possibly on the back straight because everywhere else you had to be yeah very cautious with the throttle if I was doing this for any length of time I mean as I said we were only going for five minutes with this but if you were trying to race for any length of time around here with this car your foot well, I'm using a steering wheel and pedals and stuff your foot would really start to wake after a while because yeah it was it was hard work just kind of keeping this thing pointing in the right direction however 
it wasn't too bad. I, I, it was it was controllable. It was difficult to control, but it could actually be controlled uh, on the most part. It does sound very nice as well. I I like this car on on this game. It's, it's a nice nice car to drive, but yeah, you've got to be a little bit careful when you've got 600 odd horsepower in a car that. Uh, I guess, again, it relies quite a lot on aero, and it's never going to use that aero around here. Our next car is... it's a NASCAR. Yeah, so uh, we have to have a go with one of these, just for reasons of silliness, pretty much. This is Montoya's NASCAR, because it's the only name I recognise uh, from the list of people. Uh, and Jeff Gordon, I recognise that name. I'm not sure why, but I do. Um, this is the only person I recognise the name uh, from NASCAR, because he used to race in Formula 1. So that's why I'm using this car in particular, and this is not suited. Not at all suited for a go-kart track if you were to build a track the exact opposite of, of uh, sort of a NASCAR I don't care anymore my English has just given up and um, yeah this is the complete opposite to what a NASCAR runs on that's what I was supposed to say uh, NASCAR's race on ovals I believe they race on a couple of street circuits now Infineon or whatever the hell it's called now and another one I can't remember where they are but uh, yeah they, they shouldn't work around here the gearing's all wrong. NASCARs do rolling starts on the... Do they do standing starts on the racetracks? I don't think so. I imagine they still do a rolling start there. But yeah, they're designed to do rolling starts, so the first and second gears aren't very good uh, on this for this kind of track. Handling is also... Uh, interesting. These are built for fast ovals uh, on the most part, and we're going at sort of 20 and 30 miles an hour, and the car doesn't like it at all. It is really very, very tricky to drive. It's not a surprise. This is the heaviest car that we've had, uh, 1,500 kilos, and has 850 horsepower. Yeah, this is tricky. It's very tough getting this car around this racetrack. Don't get me wrong, it was huge amounts of fun trying to get this car around this racetrack, but it does like to do that all the time, and then it's very hard to control when it's doing that. Again, may have bumped the wall a little bit uh, on the exit of that corner. Yeah, tough car to drive this one. Entertaining, though, to try and get it around this track, I think. Uh, not surprising, though, uh, that it struggled. It's really not surprising that it's, it's very tough to drive around here. We have up next possibly one of the fastest sort of rate track race cars you can get behind formula one cars maybe indy cars uh, these sort of le mans prototype cars are the fastest cars in the world around race tracks and this is the fastest sort of technical car that we're going to have here there are formula there is a formula was it a formula grand turismo car in this game however i had no money for that so that's not going to appear whereas with this car uh, this is one of the courtesy cars, so I can use these. Uh, this is the Peugeot 908, one of the most modern, one of the most recent of Peugeots. I think my, my English is not doing a good job uh, today. Jesus. Yeah, this is a very quick car around a, around a normal racetrack. Around here, it does struggle a little bit. Again, this is another very, very powerful car, 700-odd horsepower in this. It has a lot of aero that, that doesn't get used around a track like this, so it is quite hard just putting that power down onto the road. Of course, when you do get the power down onto the road and the wheels aren't spinning, it is incredibly fast accelerating. This is one of only three cars, I think, that hit uh, 200, uh, not 200, 100 miles an hour at the end of the hit, blooming 200 miles an hour uh, in this stadium, I'd be impressed. But uh, no, this is one of, the, one of the three cars that hit 100 miles an hour by the end of this straight. Mercedes just, just about did it. Um, but yeah, this thing is mighty quick if you could keep the, the thing under control if you could stop the wheel spinning again a lot of throttle control needed for the Audi uh, this is the other car that uh, that hit 100 miles an hour and it was an Audi versus Peugeot battle yet again only not the Audi you are quite expecting uh, as we use the Quattro Pikes Peak version I believe this is a even more modified version of the Group B rally car Again, got over 700 horsepower in this thing. Uh, this is an interesting car to drive, uh, this one. Again, it's four-wheel drive rally car. However, there isn't too much understeer. This is much, much better handling than the Escort. Much better through the corners, much faster accelerating as it's got an awful lot of horsepower. There is still understeer, of course. You're always going to have that, as you can see. There's a bit of smoke uh, pouring off the front of this car. Uh, if you did get it to 100 miles an hour uh, before you sort of jumped on the brakes, I may have overshot the first corner a couple of times. But on the most part, this thing was pretty good to drive. It had less understeer than a lot of the four-wheel drive cars. And because it had four-wheel drive, you didn't have the same problems as with the Mercedes and with the Peugeot and with the NASCAR and with most of the powerful things here with just putting the power down. Because, yeah, the four-wheel drive could deal with it. And, um, yeah, it's a little bit tricky driving this car actually fast because it's so, so fast in between the corners. I often ended up out-braking myself uh, from time to time. 
but yeah, it's it's a very, very good car around this place. It's got silly amounts of aero. I, I love the wings on this car. Again, they're doing absolutely nothing, but uh, that is where the four-wheel drive is quite useful. Uh, I may have, yeah, that, that happened a few times. <laughs> Just outbreaking myself into one of the fast corners because, yeah, it's incredibly fast accelerating, incredibly fast bursts of speed in between the corners. It's pretty good, though, for this, for this sort of track. And again, there's smoke pouring off the front tyres. I'm still not sure quite how the physics of that works, but never mind. Uh, it's just something Gran Turismo does. Anyway, that is it uh, for the race cars that, that we are going to send around the go-kart track. And this is on to the all-important lap times. Well, the go-kart was beaten. In fact, it ended up in fifth. It was beaten by the Audi Quattro that goes first. I was amazed that that thing was actually faster than the Peugeot 908. I'm not surprised that it's good around here. I'm surprised, though, that it's a tenth of a second faster than the Le Mans prototype car. The Mercedes SLS, again, I'm surprised by that lap time, <laughs> goes into third. Uh, almost a second quicker than a go-kart the lexus isf touring car managed to use all of its power uh, just about around this track and beats the go-kart by a few thousandths of a second subaru brz uh, yeah i'm that did pretty well that did better than i was expecting it around here very very close to the go-karts lap times the mx5 touring car despite its lack of power is three tenths of a second uh, off the subaru brz around here considering that brz's got probably a hundred and a little bit 150 horsepower more uh, that's pretty damn impressive uh, from the mx5 the understeeriness of the escort caused it some problems um, but still not a bad lap time down in eighth the vw lupo yeah it had absolutely no power but still put in a fairly good lap time. That's faster than all of the road cars we had yesterday. And the VW Lupo beat a NASCAR. It's not very often that you are going to say that. But that's not particularly surprising when you look at the track. Interestingly though, what I was surprised about when we talk about the NASCAR is that that is still a quicker lap time than the road cars. That's still faster than the KTM Crossbow around a place like this. So yeah, fairly impressive lap time, all things considered, for the NASCAR. However, that is it uh, for this video, guys. So thank you very much for watching. People seem to be enjoying uh, this sort of go-kart track challenge. So maybe, maybe I'll carry on. Maybe I'll do some more sort of different classes of car. Maybe we'll have some historic cars. Maybe we'll have some super minis, that kind of thing. I don't know. Let me know in the comments what you'd like to see raced around this go-kart track. Maybe we'll have some more surprises of either incredibly good cars or cars that are much faster around here than, than you expected. Uh, however, that is it for today, so thank you very much for watching, and until next time, goodbye.